Good morning, and welcome to our Father's House on this second Sunday at Advent. Today's readings may be found on page number 9952, page 952 in the back of your missiles. Please stand for our opening hymns. Please join in singing in our Advent opening song, Emmanuel. Um, it's not in our hymnal, so uh, you'll repeat after me. sisters, as we gather together on this second Sunday of Advent, we do so by marking ourselves with the sign of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today as we gather, we ask the Lord to renew in us the gift of love and life as we ask his blessings upon this second candle that now lights our way. As John the Baptist is a voice crying out in the wilderness, may we hear that call and heed to follow the Lord. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of all peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us, the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we now light the second candle of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. Invite the children forward now for the children's liturgy of the word this morning. All of the children come forth now as we go to listen to God's word spoken to our hearts. Children, we are just two weeks away from celebrating the birthday of Jesus. And today we meet a very special person in the gospel by the name of John the Baptist. He was the cousin of Jesus. And today we hear him calling us to open our hearts, to open our ears, to listen to God as we are ready to celebrate soon his birthday. Go forth now and listen to God's word. As the children go forth to listen to the word spoken to them, let our hearts be attentive to the word that the Lord desires to speak to us. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for her sins. A voice cries out. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Make every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be traveled, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up to the high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by the strong arm. Here is the reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading with ooze with care. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing Psalm 85. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Of the earth and 
justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of the God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spore or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters, the Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him 
and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather, leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One, mightier than I, is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, for our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. On this second Sunday of Advent, we have the wonderful imagery and the metaphors that the prophet Isaiah gives us in that first reading, which is well known to many of us. Many of Christmas songs have been written using the words of Isaiah the prophet. Certainly Handel's Messiah composed beautifully the metaphors and imagery of those words that we hear in the first reading today. A reminder to us that with this imminent coming of Christ at Christmas, we have the opportunity to experience anew the gift of peace, the promise that we can live in harmony one with the other as the lion and the lamb lie down together. Peace is possible and probable because of the gift of Christ in the hearts of God's people. But before we hear those words of peace, we have the proclamation of John the Baptist, which we hear every year on the second Sunday of Advent. This voice crying out in the wilderness. Mark, at the very beginning of his gospel, takes us to the wilderness. Not to the mountains and the hills, to the valleys that Isaiah the prophet speaks of in the first reading. But he takes us to the wilderness. The wilderness is a place of chaos. It's a place of unrest. It's a place of uncertainty. Why would Mark take us there? Because it's there that he believes that only the voice of hope can be heard in the midst of the chaos. The voice of hope is heard amongst God's people that we can be delivered from the chaos of the world in which we live and that we might know the fullness of peace that is promised by God. Certainly that promise of peace is to be felt, we pray, especially in the places where war ravages today in our world, where there is unrest, where there is chaos, where there is trouble. In 1941, the song White Christmas was composed by Irving Berlin. He was so proud of the fact that he wrote that song that he came out of the studio and said to his friends, this is by far the best song ever written, and it will stand the test of time of all history. What an ego he had that particular morning when he proclaimed what wonders he did with that song. But in those words, and we probably could all sing it together, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the one I used to know. There is in those words that sentiment that wants to bring us back often to the places where we knew, the places where we're comfortable, the places where we're at home, the places where traditions continue to identify and help shape who we are. He wrote that song in the midst of the Second World War, when people were longing for a home, when they were longing for peace, when they were longing to return to what they knew, what was comfortable, what was peaceful. But you know, Christmas, it's not always a place of peace and hope for people. There are people who struggle during the holidays. They struggle with the pain of losing a loved one. They struggle with the ways that things aren't the way they used to be. Maybe in the many hearts, they long for it to be over. And yet in the midst of these days, we as a faith-filled people in the midst of the chaos are called to hear the voice of hope crying out to us. It's not about the tinsel and the lights. It's not about the chocolate and the packages. It's about the promise that God gives us in Christ. The hope that assures us and reminds us that even in the midst of the chaos in our world, 
and sometimes even in our own hearts, that peace is not only possible, it's probable because it's given to us by Christ, who longs to have a relationship with us. And so today, as we pause halfway now in this season of Advent, just 10 days, 15 days, two weeks to Christmas, in the midst of the chaos that might be surrounding us with all of the things that we have yet to do, we pause for a moment to hear this voice reminding us that the gift of hope is the gift that God wants to give us so that we, whether we're on the mountain or in the valley, whether we're with the lion or the lamb lying down, whether we're proclaiming on the mountaintop, that we hear the voice rendering us be still, be at peace, and know of the gift that comes to us in Christ, a gift that surpasses all other gifts, a gift that ushers in for us the opportunity to welcome anew the one who offers us the very gift of hope. We might be dreaming of a white Christmas. We might be dreaming of the way that things used to be. But in the midst of our dreams, let us take comfort in the hope and in the promise that God is with us in all things. Let us stand to profess our faith and our belief in our loving God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. In faith and in confidence, we present our needs and our concerns to our loving and gracious God. That the church may be a voice crying out in the wilderness, proclaiming the kingdom of God to a world in need of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. That the world leaders will be inspired by the light of Christ to seek peace and justice and bring an end to war and conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that we might prepare the way of the Lord in our hearts and homes and grow in faith, hope, and love during this Advent season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our family members and friends who have wandered from knowing Jesus and his church. May we plant and nurture seeds of faith from our joyful witness and acts of love and kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the spirit of Christian hospitality may flourish our, in our parish so that we together will build a culture of invitation and welcome. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, sick, or have lost a loved one, may we be attentive to their needs by reaching out with compassion and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in Christ, especially Stella Zielinski, may they find eternal peace and happiness in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who remember, we remember in a special way at this Mass. Marianne 
Borgia, Mary Gauchi, Linda Gauchi, Michael Douglas Carter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, as we ask that you hear these, our prayers of need and concern, you give us the grace to hear the voice of hope calling out to us on our Advent journey that ultimately leads to the gift of your Son at Christmas. We ask this in your name, you who live and reign, God forever and ever. Amen. As the altar is prepared and the gifts of bread and wine are brought forward, I invite any of the children who have an offering for the giving well to come and to share their offering for other children and families most in need, especially during this Christmas time. Thank you, children, for your love and generosity for others. Please join in singing number 134, Emmanuel, number 134. brothers and sisters at my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church be pleased O Lord with our humble prayers and offerings and since we have no merits to plead our cause come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our bishop, the order of bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, with Irenaeus, Andrew, Mary of the Hills, John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Brothers 
brothers and sisters at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Share with one another now as you're comfortable some sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should be under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
please join in singing number 118, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 118. singing number 128 come enter our hearts number 128 We 
replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. I must admit, this is the largest group of announcements that I've had in my almost four years of being with you. So I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. Grab a bulletin as you leave today. All the information is in the bulletin. There is something happening here every day this week. Beginning this evening with the uh, caroling in the city, our children's choir is going to be on stage at 545 or so on Main Street and about 4th, right, Patrick? Main and 4th? Yeah. <clears throat> so please join Michelle Morrow and the Children's Choir in sharing their celebrations of Christmas this afternoon downtown. On Tuesday night, we have our Advent Night of Adoration and Reconciliation at St. Andrew's for the Family of Parishes from 6 to 7.30. Come for any or all of that. Wednesday night in here, we have a wonderful evening prayer called Taze, which is done with mantra music over and over in the midst of darkness and candlelight. So please join St. Mary the Hills and St. Irenaeus as we celebrate Taze on Wednesday. Um, Thursday we have a break. Friday we have evening prayer here for the children and families as we bless the baby Jesus from your home nativity scenes. We light the new tree. We um, bless the new uh, nativity scene outside and we have carols and cocoa outside as well, weather pending. Saturday is the St. Nicholas party for all the children of the parish. Please RSVP from the bulletin. And my God, Christmas is just a few days away. <laughs> so... As you leave today, the Apwatki wafers are available for those who have that tradition on Christmas Eve, so please um, avail yourself of those. And lastly, we are in need of volunteers to help decorate the church for Christmas. You know, Christmas falls on Sunday evening and Monday, so we still have Saturday and Sunday Masses, so it's a crunch weekend. So we're going to be decorating the church at the very last minute. So if you could join us on Friday afternoon, December 22nd. Or again, on Saturday morning, December 23rd, we're going to do it in two stages. There's a sign-up sheet in the back at the worship counter, or see Patrick in the back today. We certainly could use some help in transforming our church and getting it ready for Christmas in such a short time. Enough. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Bow your heads as we pray God's blessings upon us. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace and in love to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 506, Christ Be Our Light, number 506. We'll be singing verses 1, 4, and 5. Shining.
Güte. 